Cheers, deadbeats. Okay, yeah, I admit it. I'm weeb trash. But in the event that you're not trying to recreate your favorite VTubers fan base, all these techniques will leave you with a pretty sick looking Legion of the Damned model too. All right, first thing we need to do is take a look at our reference images and get a little bit of inspiration from there. So I'm thinking one of the things we're gonna need is probably a head swap and some flaming skulls. There's also those four rivets on the chest I wanna duplicate. Maybe add some chains. Uh, possibly a tattered cloak and maybe even shoulder swaps. For color scheme, uh, we're looking at primarily black and then I'm thinking our secondary should be pink rather than red. I don't want somebody to confuse it for a Rakdos Marine. All right, and then for our last accent colors, I think we're just gonna do a gold and then we're actually gonna add a blue flame effect to it. I don't know what it is. I just really like the idea of the underworld has these blue flames like Hades from Disney or Ereshkigal from Fate. All right, now that we've got a good idea of how conversions we want to make and a good plan for our scheme, let's go ahead and look a little bit more. Respectfully, of course. Okay, let's crack this boy open. Now, I'm gonna assume you know how to build a Primera Space Marine. If not, I don't know. I'm sure someone on YouTube has a tutorial on it. Anyway, so with some of the conversion work we're doing, we're actually going to want to put this guy together in sub-assemblies. Meaning we've got the main body, the rifle arm, the head, and the backpack all separate. Along with the shoulders too, but you'll see why. Okay, so actual important bit about doing sub-assemblies. When you have two-handed weapons, check the fit before you glue anything together. You can use poster tack to keep them in place while you check the fit, but here I'm just going to use my hands and hold them together. Alright, now we're going to start with pretty standard procedure on converting space marines, and that's removing the Aquila. We'll use some clippers, hobby knives, sanding sticks, and even a dash of Tamiya Thin just to get it nice and smooth. And for good measure, I'm going to do the same thing to the bolter. Imperium goes a little over the top on those skulls and wings for my taste. Drill your barrels. Using a thumbtack, I'm going to place the four pilot holes where I'm going to want the rivets to go in. Use an appropriately sized drill bit. For me, it's going to be a two millimeter. Pro tip when doing these, keep an eye on how far you're drilling in there. You want it about halfway through on that bearing. Today I'm using these 1.8 millimeter bearings that I got on Amazon. Link in the description below. Now to glue in the bearings, I actually apply the super glue to a toothpick and then dip those into the recesses. Now we're gonna spice it up on our miniatures and get some chains involved. Now when I initially glue the links down, I like to keep it somewhere mostly out of sight, like under an armpit or right behind the backpack on a space marine. Most of the time in areas like this too, I like to add a second dab of super glue just to help secure in place. And then when it's looking good for you, just snip it off and glue the end down. Now while this is optional, I highly suggest taking some super glue thin and applying that to the chains just to really lock it in place for painting. Now I'm going to do the same thing to one of the Space Marine's legs and wrist. The amount of chains you use can really be left to personal taste. I just really don't recommend mummifying your Marine like this. Now the skull needs a little bit of cleaning up from its own casting. Now I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm actually going to remove the entire neck from this head swap. Reason being, I'm going to end up pinning it so I can have easier access painting it. Then, when I glue in that pin to the cowl later, the white primer is going to blend into the glow effect we add into the cowl, giving the skull the look that it's suspended above the body in a spooky way. Now, with a primer of your choice, we're going to take any assembly with power armor and paint it black, and the shoulders and head are going to be primed white.
Okay. Now, before we get into this, I want to go on a brief tangent on painting black. Of which, I'm not a subject matter expert, but this is all purely opinion. We got to think about black as this road map. Somewhere where we make stops along the way. Now, the quickest route is going to be starting from our black and ending in our white to light gray highlight. But we see that most painters also include in another color when they're adding black to really give it some color depth and unite it with the rest of the model. Problem being, in my opinion, is that on this roadmap to black, the journey is just as important as the destination we're getting to. We can't just take that same straight path and end in like our super light blue. And I think if we think about this for a second, it makes sense. This highlight is the brightest point on the miniature. It's supposed to be where the light is hitting it the most and should be revealing its true color the most. So what I propose is instead of going straight across, what we do is we take a little detour through color town, but we still end in that gray to near white highlight. Or, you know, I could be full of it. Try it out. All right, first step of painting, and it literally requires no skill. We're gonna take the dark gray paint and sponge all over the space marine with it leaving any recesses and areas that would be shadowed untouched. Now, if you're wondering to get some of this foam I use for my sponging, there's no like special or secret dealer for it. I got a single sheet of pluck foam a while ago to store my models, and I have been pulling from that ever since. I have yet to run out. Now paint selection is a little important here. You need something that can be thin, but also maintains the opacity while covering over black. Why does it need to be thinned? Stippling is a technique that it becomes really easy to start building up texture on. As you're constantly plucking away at the model, it's really easy to leave behind too much paint and get a rough texture on your model, and we don't want that. Your paints should be... smooth. And now we're going to do this again, this time using a 50-50 mix of our dark gray and a blue. We're also only going to be stippling most of the upward facing parts of the model that would be catching light. So starting from here, we need to be a lot more selective with how we're placing our highlights. Now we really got to think about how the light is going to be bouncing off of this model. Think of this as entry level NNM. Something at which I am still very clearly a novice. Now we're going to switch from a sponge to a brush to keep stippling. This time a mixture of light gray and blue. Stop. Stop. Time out. Okay. This is what I like to call mistake the first. Now I stand by my technique and even the color choice here, believe it or not. But I think this was a little bit of too much of a jump too fast. In all reality, I should have used one more intermediate step where I did dark gray, light gray, and blue before jumping up here. I also probably could have taken a little more time in my stippling. I was playing a little too fast and loose with it. It should have been a little more thin, a little more sporadic, and not globbed on like I have it here. Anyway, on with the video. All right, now within that previous layer, we're gonna add one more highlight of pure light gray. Now before moving on to do our final edge highlight on the black armor, we're actually gonna do the undersuit first. Reason being, if we end up coloring outside the lines, it's gonna be a lot easier to fix it with the edge highlight rather than potentially ruining our edge highlight and then having to go back. I'm going to use a nice burnt red to apply the base coat to the undersuit and then just highlight the tubings with regular old red. One highlight remains. Edge highlighting is a great way to define all of the different areas on your model. They're also kind of hard. So instead, I do an almost stipply edge highlight, make it a very uneven and broken surface when applying it. You still want to end up thinning your paint just like you would a normal edge highlight, 
and you're even want to remove a lot of that paint, again, like you would a normal edge highlight, lest we end up splotching it all over the model. Now, during this time, we're never going to just drag our brush across the model. We're just going to move along those edges, tapping it unevenly as we go. This is going to make for a great defined edge highlight, and it's also, in my opinion, a lot easier. Another quick tip for painting these Space Marines. A lot of times they're going to have panels that butt up against each other, and you don't have to highlight both of these. Just look at the model for a second and think about which one of these is going to end up catching the light, and then apply your highlight there. It's going to look almost just as good in literally be half the work. All right, with that step done, we're gonna apply a gloss varnish to the armor. Yep, and this is mistake the second. You'll see in a minute. Now we're gonna be using a simple black oil wash to really hit the recesses and tone down this model. Now, if you're someone who's unfamiliar with oil washes, I'll give you the quick breakdown right here. You're gonna use some oil paint, and you're going to use some white spirits as a thinner. Think of it this way. More oil and less dilution is going to be a lot thicker, it's going to take a little longer to dry, and it's going to stain the model a little more. The thinner it is, the easier it will flow into those recesses and avoid those parts of the model that you don't want stained. Of course, the major advantage on both of these is that you can use a sponge and some white spirits to remove most of the oil paints, leaving the rest of your model untouched. Now with this oil wash, I like to take a nice cruddy synthetic brush and really just get up in there on that model. Just absolutely coat that son of a bitch. All right, so now with those oil setting up, let's move on to the rest of the sub-assemblies. All right, I'm gonna use golden brown to base coat the skull. And while I try to avoid any of the areas that are gonna be flame later, it's not the biggest deal because we'll clean it up with white before we do those. Now to really build some contrast here, we're going to have the darkest part of the skull right up against the lightest part of the flame. To accomplish that, we're going to wash all of the bone areas in Agrax Earthshade. Now when painting the skull, blending isn't going to be as high of a priority as it normally is. This is a very small object, and we're not making a giant jump in value. So just layering is really fine. And for that first layer, we're gonna use a 50-50 mix of golden brown and ivory. Pay special mind to avoid all of the recesses, especially the ones around those flames, as they're gonna give us that big contrast jump. Next, we're gonna move on to a highlight of pure ivory. And now our final highlight, save for just the sharpest points, is going to be a 50-50 mix of ivory and white. Alright, to get that cool underworldy and flame effect, I'm actually just going to be using a modified recipe for how I paint flames normally. We're going to go from a white at the base, to the main color of our flames being blue, and then end it in a black brown as almost if the smoke trails are starting to come off of the flames. So. Let's start by touching up the skull and repainting any of those areas we covered up white. Now, our first highlight is going to be a 50-50 mix of the fluorescent blue and white. Now with this, I'm going to cover almost the entirety of the top half of the flames in this, as even the deepest recesses that high up won't be a pure white. Now for the rest of it, we're going to come at it with our brush from the side, because we really just want to hit those raised edges with our blue. Alright, now we're going to come in with that pure fluorescent blue. Again, we're going to come at it from the side of our brush, just hitting those raged edges on the flames. And then we're going to come at it with our final highlight of a black brown. And I only apply this to the very tips of the flames, as if they're burning out and giving off some smoke and ash. To make our lives a little easier, we're just going to airbrush on the fluorescent pink onto the shoulder pads. These paints come through the airbrush 
just great, and it's going to save us so much time. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you why that gloss varnish was a mistake. This was entirely me getting caught up in my own head. I was painting this rather quickly, and I was kind of worried about losing some paint off the model as I'm removing the oils. Typically, this isn't that big of a concern with me, especially on the test model, since it came out fine. But, I was just on the internet, I kind of let it lead me like, you know what? Gloss varnish is great. Let's go for it, and see how it goes. And while it's not awful, it didn't achieve the effect I was looking for. A gloss varnish is actually a really good thing with oils, as a gloss finish really allows it to flow into those recesses and get wiped away from those flat panel areas. But I was looking for a staining effect, something I achieved on my test model, and even models I've done before. When the oil paint stains it, it really unites all of those colors, causing those bright color jumps I have on there to kind of get a little more united. I think if I were to do this again, I would definitely have applied a matte varnish if I did one at all. Now, with our oils removed and fully cured, we're going to add a base coat of white to the bolter casing and the back of the power pack, as we're going to want these to be that fluorescent pink in the future. Using Pro Acryl's white, this is only going to take us two to three coats to fully cover over that black. Now we're going to apply that pink base coat to those areas we painted white. These fluorescent colors really take us good two to three coats to set up a solid base coat on them, so just be patient with it. After we finish a nice solid pink base coat, let's glaze some red into the corners and bottoms of these areas to add some color depth to them. Let's add a little more weathering in here. We're going to take the sponge again, in a nice jagged area, and then we're going to sponge on some dark gray. Now to get some good definition here, I'm going to actually thin down some black Templar contrast paint to panel line the shoulders. Quickly applied some transfers onto this marine. Let's keep working on something new. I'm going to try a bit of freehand. As this is a deadbeat marine, it only makes sense that we pay some tribute by naming our Bolter Mori. Yeah, it's still kind of trash, but hey, you don't get any better without trying. Now, anywhere we have some of these larger chips, I'm going to come in with a little bit of white just to catch the edges on it. This really adds a lot of depth and dimension to these chips. Alright, now let's add a nice glowing effect to the cowl of our marine. I'm all for doing things as cheaply as possible and getting the most budget equipment you can, like this blue tack right here, but I genuinely mean it. Go buy something specifically made for airbrush masking. This is some of the best stuff I've ever worked with. Whenever I work with this, I seriously never have to worry about losing some paint when I demask it. So we're going to airbrush the whole cowl with some white, come in and airbrush the whole cowl with a fluorescent blue to match our flames, and now we're going to come back with white again. This time I'm going to reinforce the center of the glow by brushing on white right dead center where the neck is supposed to go. Now when I apply the airbrush to it, it's going to make it a lot stronger and help it blend out. All right, we're gonna hit this whole thing with a matte varnish, and now we're ready for our metallics. To start, I'm gonna use a 50-50 mix of bronze and rich gold from Pro Acryl.
I'm going to base coating all of the areas that I want to end up being gold. This includes the chest rivets, vents on the power pack, the chains, the bolter casing, and the shoulder trim. So when using Pro Acryl metallic paints, I like to add in at least a drop or two of Magic Mix in there just to really help thin them out. They can come out a little thick initially. This just helps prevent the chunk and give you a nice even coat. Just don't over thin it because then you start to lose opacity and ain't nobody got time for that. We're now gonna apply a highlight with just rich gold. This is gonna be a bit more of a selective highlight. We're only gonna be hitting the protruding areas that are really gonna catch the light on this model. Now, for all of the other metallics, we're just going to be using Vallejo Air Aluminum with some black Templar contrast paint mixed in to dull it down. And now I'm just gonna apply this to just the bolter, really. Alright, to wash our metallic areas, I'm actually going to be using a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Null Oil Gloss. I add in the gloss component because I really want to keep the luster on these metallics. I don't want to just dull them down and come back in with another highlight. Now, because we're adding this gloss component to it, you really want to be careful when applying this wash to the chains or anywhere that butts up right against our armor, because that difference in finish is really going to stick out on the end of the model. All right, all that's left is to put it all together. Now, when you glue this guy together, make sure you're gluing plastic to plastic. So, any area where you're going to be applying glue, try and very carefully with a hobby knife remove all of the paint from there. Don't overdo it and ruin your paint job, but that plastic to plastic bond is really important for keeping your models together. Okay. Finish up the model. Now it's time for some review and critique. Number one, definitely the stippling. I'm still pretty proud of how this Marine came out, but there's always something new I can work on. I want to keep experimenting with this whole idea of the black roadmap, where you take that detour into color town. Number two, definitely the varnishes. When I'm looking to achieve that stained effect in the future, I'm definitely going to use a matte or no varnish to finish it up. Number three, chipping could have been a lot better. Um, I don't think it's bad, but I don't know, it feels a little artificial to me. I think I could have gone in with a brush and reinforced it a bit to make it look better. Number three and a three and a half ish. I just want to keep working on freehand. I, I think this one will look not great, but you know, it's readable. Number four. I think during my sub assembly process, there was no real reason to leave the Marine off the base. That main body sub assembly could have probably been glued onto the base and it would have made painting it a little easier and more expeditious. I think for the next dead boot Marine I do, I think I'm going to try adding the cloak to it. I wasn't brave enough this time. And speaking of next time, if you're looking to follow me outside of YouTube, go ahead and check out my Instagram. Make a couple posts there a week about some of the things I'm doing that really don't always make into the videos. And that's it, guys. That's the video. Leave me a like if you found it useful. Go ahead and drop a comment on things that you took away from this. And maybe even suggest the possible next Hollow member that gets my arena -fied. It's going to be the show.